I'm running the High Sparrow list from the tactics video that I just recently did. And uh, if you want to learn more about this one, just watch that video. Short story, I'm taking a lot of advantage of the faith mechanic in this one, and we'll see how it measures up against uh, Night's Watch. Tyler's opted to bring an Othal list that's pretty wide. There's uh, one unit of Sworn Brothers, two Conscripts, a Bolt Thrower, uh, Crossbowman, and Ghost. I think what we end up getting up to in this one is nine activations, if I count right. Oh, and there's Ranger Trackers, so we can't forget about those. This one's going to be a tough one because I was hoping that this Lannister list would be able to leverage its extra activations, but I might have a little bit of an issue with this one. We're trying out new Feast for Crows, and my poor fellows are going to be the ones that are running on the initial corpse piles, and then the Knights and Warrior Sons are going to be there to kind of take out anything that challenges them, and my middle unit of poor fellows is kind of meant to shift place where, uh, or, or shift to wherever the, the next corpse pile is placed. So I feel like I've got a pretty good deployment for this one, and I think Tyler's just trying to go for a very symmetrical one with his ranged elements more towards the middle so that he can uh, get some easy shots at me, but I'm going to try and make that a little bit more difficult for him. So I had won the roll-off on this one, and I think we hadn't, f I, I must have overlooked the rule for choosing sides and all that business. So, uh, I opted winning the roll-off and, uh, and took the second turn, and then Tyler ended up sticking on his side. So uh, I think it was more he stayed over there because he just didn't want to move. But uh, he starts off by taking the crown right away because he realizes that with Preston Greenfield, if I have that zone, it means that I can start really running the engine on card draw. But unfortunately, it does leave me open to grab the tactics position which for me on this turn is just as good because the Preston Greenfield engine is only going to get me two cards at most. Uh, I don't really have anything to attack with him but I feel like uh, taking the tactics position is going to shut me out of the maneuver position for this turn and uh, that's a little bit of a bummer because uh, trying to get up on these corpse piles early is really good, or at least get in the threat range of them. But I think with just the march on turn one, I can get there just fine. So it's a mitigatable risk that I end up taking, and it just allows the uh, crossbowmen to get up a little further into position to where they can try and start shooting things. Um, they're kind of matched up right against a unit that I don't think they like seeing, and that's just a uh, high-impact heavy cavalry that doesn't really mind the um, the shooting so much from them. Uh, I ha ended up in the with the six cards that I have in my hand, I ended up picking up a Wealth of the Rock and a Protection of the Father, so I decide to maneuver the Knights of Casterly Rock in a fashion to where they can get right in front of that stake wall, and uh, I'm, I'm not really worried about the what Tyler ends up doing in terms of uh, shooting them because I should be able to stave off their shooting for a couple turns. The uh, one thing that I didn't really account for, though, was uh, Tyler taking the combat position away from me because I, I was hoping to kind of just get the most out of... Uh, the, the most out of my uh, attack or the most out of my activations by just grabbing that zone and and swinging at the stakes but it looks like Tyler opted not to take that one and I'm not 100% sure the reasoning why I don't have Varus in this list so I couldn't shut it down or anything but here we have protection of the father going through after a couple hits get through with Tyler and uh we're going to see if the morale tests pass, and they're good. They've, they're influenced by this high sparrow, so they're sitting at fours right now. And uh, they crush it with the roll. They would have taken one wound normally, so I don't really get a whole lot of uh, efficacy out of protection uh, from the father, or protection of the father. But uh, no saves, or no wounds is, is good wounds for me. And this is where Tyler realizes or learns that Lannister supremacy uh, triggers off of ranged attacks as well. Uh, he does pass it with the uh, the crossbowman, so um, that's no big deal. Okay, so I now the the knights are going ahead and, and getting rid of their uh, that stake wall that's in front of them. So the one thing that was protecting the uh, crossbowman is now gone. Uh, and then I think that was Pycelle that took that one. So I'm putting a weekend out on the. Uh, Sworn Brothers with Jon Snow in them, so I don't have to worry about too much from them at all. 
and with my expert positioning I am just a, a hair out of the uh, scorpion bolt thrower um, that was not completely on purpose but I'll take it um, I think in uh, if I were a better player than what I am right at, at this point I, I must have just not been thinking about it but what I really should have done was Oh, you know what? I was going to say I should have walked back and let Tyler take the combat position, but I just realized he only has two NCUs, so that's why he couldn't do it. Here I am thinking I was just being a, a, a righteous, uh, lame player, but Tyler literally could not take that combat zone to kill the Knights of Castor or to shoot the Knights of Casterly Rock. So, bonus points for me for being a decent person, but not, uh, um, but not being a a lame person at the same time I guess I don't know I was lost there this is another weird movement that I had where uh, I was not 100% sure that I could get to the objective because I figure I can march up and pivot and make it by pivoting onto the objective to just claim it right away uh, I probably could have just put down one of the peacekeeper uh, widgets to see if the uh, to, to see from this position here if I could make it on um, I don't uh, I, I decided to just say I'm not sure but uh, we just walked it back and we're trying to figure out if I can get onto it now his I think his the big thing was like can the conscript if the conscripts go up there can they get it too and it was the, their problem was that they were a little too far out but now we've got it to where the bolt throwers got a bead on the uh, the poor fellows but they are holding that objective now, and they're very reluctant to let it go. So with a, a morale at minus two from that bolt thrower, uh, I, I don't think the poor fellows are really in a bad spot in terms of like not being able to survive that panic check. And I want them to have faith tokens anyways. Uh, but it looks like Tyler can't really do anything with the bolt thrower. We must have measured, and they were just out. Um so I think this is where we find out that the, both of these guys were deployed in the same fashion, and I just put that peacekeeper ring down and was like, okay, wait, no, there's I, I didn't pivot my guys right, so we have to fix this. So there's no way for me to claim that, and maybe the corpse piles just weren't positioned quite properly. I think that's the real the one thing that I really would like from this scenario is a little bit more accurate placement on corpse piles, which I know isn't going to function in the long term because currently most of us are just using the one uh, corpse pile from any starter box but there are two different sizes of that and then there's the kickstarter terrain as well and then if you listen to some of this cool Mini or not people talk about terrain in general they say that just because it comes in the box doesn't mean you have to just use that kind and uh, I'm, I'm not really super down with the idea of that like making your own terrain for these things especially now since it's tied to an objective that really kind of messes with the overall flow of it now i don't think people are going to be using a bunch of custom terrain they're really going to be basing it off of those smaller corpse piles that are available but it's just one of those things where if you're going to integrate standardized terrain into or if you're going to integrate terrain into your scenarios it really should be standardized and i would prefer that it just you know not have any uh any like variability to it so that we can just kind of play these scenarios the way they're meant to be played and not have to worry about like a a 10 inch long corpse pile that's in the middle of a feast for crows objective but it looks like tyler's kind of setting himself up for when the knights come in because they're assuredly coming into something it's just now i'm kind of at this point where i have to make a decision for next turn which is coming very shortly, on who I actually want to put my knights into because I think that I could probably take out the uh, the crossbowmen in one fell swoop. Maybe not one, but I'd have to get real lucky on it with like some good crit blows and uh, a decent panic check. But the, uh, the thing I have to worry about then is that the Sworn Brothers are going to be coming at me, and... Uh, they won't be able to get to me right away because they'll probably have to maneuver with the um, with the horse to get on a side. But I figure that that's too much of a risk for me to take. So I decide to uh, abandon my first plan of charging into the crossbowmen right away and just get right into the Sworn Brothers so that they can kind of stay where they're at and the poor fellows can kind of do their business when the way they need to. 
And the knights end up rolling pretty well. I think it comes out to be uh, 10 hits or something like that. And the Sworn Brothers don't have the greatest save, especially when it's Sundering. And uh, things weren't looking so hot for Tyler in terms of the panic save or the panic check or the uh, armor save. So I think he ends up losing two ranks, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, it looks like nine bodies come off of that one. So uh, good on me for recognizing the real threat uh, between those two and just going for it. Now the crossbowmen can shift back and shoot at me, and Othal Yarwick's cards can make that pretty painful, especially since I don't have the High Sparrow's influence on them right away. But I feel like I had to take this opportunity to stop the Sworn Brothers before they become more of an issue. And now Tyler doesn't have a great incentive to activate them next to try and uh, heal them back. Uh, if he takes the combat zone, their attacks aren't going to be super great either. I mean, Jon Snow gets them up to the second rank when they're attacking, so they'll at least be able to throw those five dice at me. But uh, the, 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 the chances of them like doing wounds is great. That means that I'd force a panic check. Uh, I'm by the more by the tree now than I am by a corpse pile, so the knights are sitting at five morale, so there's a good chance that Lannister Supremacy could just kill him, and those Sworn Brothers are weakened as well, so they've got that going against them too. But Tyler decides to seize the opportunity uh, to take the objective first, because that's really going to be the important thing about trying to win this game as a... Uh, you know, the High Sparrow does play attrition, and part of the thing that happens with attrition is you attrition to victory through the scenario by attrition, if that makes sense. So I'm whittling down my opponent's forces, and while I'm doing that, I'm ending, I'm making it very difficult for him to come back into the scenario. But if he gets on the scenario early, that kind of slows down my tempo, and I can't control the pace of the game anymore because he's trying to, he's scoring those points that I'm not getting. So uh, the speed of the game really warps itself down. I think he ends up activating the, uh, or Jon Snow's unit next. Um, I'm not sure what I activated in before him. I'm, I was talking too much about tempo, and when I talk about tempo, I get crazy. But um, because I think it's a unique concept that not many people really discuss in wargaming. Uh, but anyway, the Knights of Casterly Rock don't have any problems. They don't take any wounds. And uh, the Sworn Brothers end up passing their morale test from Lannister Supremacy. And I end up taking the coin on the High Sparrow... Maybe the maybe the knights did take wounds, and the the, the and the high sparrow just healed them back, um, or I took the coin because I didn't want Tyler to have it because that seems like the the more like blocky play, and I think that that was more likely than not the move for me. But now I've got that tactics board open again, or the tactics position open again, and I'm really just you know I I can take it whenever I need it, and right now I'm not it's not super necessary for me. So uh, the poor fellows are ending up, they're moving into position because I want them to take on the crossbowmen and tie them up because if they're in combat, they're not shooting and their shooting is quite, or their fight, their ability to fight is quite atrocious. So I think I can kind of beat them back a little bit with my uh, high morale save where they don't have that going for them. But I think the scorpion bolt thrower is in range to shoot the poor fellows that are in the middle of the table. Um... And I think the the enhancement that Tyler put on was a uh, serrated enhancement. And uh, um, I was just mentioning that, or this must be the crossbows that shoot, that are shooting and not the, the bolt thrower. But I had mentioned to him that my poor fellows are sitting at a two plus morale save right now with that tree right by them. And uh, um, they, they end up taking a few wounds from the, from the arrows, the, they must have had a weakened token or something on them also, uh, probably from the tactics position that I took. And uh, not a whole lot of wounds done there. So now I'm able to activate them. I have the, the coin, so I get my full amount back. And I can't make this charge anything less than a 2, so uh, I need to throw a 2 to make it, which is unfortunate, but um, I can't always get my guaranteed charges. So... Um, I decide to charge in, ready, aim, fire goes off, and I surprisingly make a, a one, one of those saves. So Tyler didn't hit real well, and I survived pretty well. 
but then we had a, a weakened token on, so we rolled it back, and then one of the other ones missed too. So I've still got my, uh, I've still got my, uh, my full ranks, and I think this was Wrath of the Warrior. So they passed their morale check from the shooting, passed their morale check from that. So now we got two faith tokens on this unit, and they are ready to fight. We make the charge with no problem. We don't, we don't have any uh, issues with the with being disorderly or anything. So I'm hitting on fours now with Wrath of the Warrior. And uh, and five of those connect. And the D3, or no, four of them connect and the D3 does two. So there's a, a pretty good chunk of wounds that come off of Tyler from that one. It must have been a few more saves than than that because that's eight. Maybe he had his panic check in there too. But the you'll notice one of the things that I mentioned in my tactics video was that I kind of forgot about the last part of uh, the the faith mechanic for the, uh, or zealous something or whatever for the poor fellows, and that I didn't take my D3 wounds. So it's important to note that that unit's sitting on two ranks right now um, with the wounds that they would have taken from their, uh, their faith ability. I don't think, I said in the tactics video, and I'll say it again, I don't think that it really changed a whole lot in this game that I had forgotten about that ability, but uh, we'll kind of see how it flows out just because this is the first time I've watched it, watched this battle report back in a little while. So we'll see if I, I righteously messed something up or, uh, or if everything was okay, like I said, or like I had expected. So um, I was really kind of trying to drag out the activation for these poor fellows at the top so that I could start my turn engaged with the... Uh, um, with the uh, conscript sitting there. And uh, once I actually get into them and, and have the order go off, um, they end up putting through a lot of wounds. Um, this is another one I forget about, the, the zealous faith thing. I can't remember what it's exactly called. but um, I can't remember exactly what card I'm playing here either, but it is something that Tyler's kind of got to think about. It might be... Hmm. Oh, it's a paid mutiny is what it is. I was trying to get someone to fail a morale check so they would drop their token, um, which is another thing that I kind of forgot about because the it wasn't that I forgot about it. It was just that it slipped my mind um, that the, uh, the conscripts up there had failed a morale test, so they should have dropped the, the corpse pile token that they had picked up, but I just wasn't paying attention to it. Um, ghosts end up Ghost ends up trying to pin the poor fellows down, which is another bummer for me because, like I said, with this list, I want to kind of set the battlefield tempo on my own terms with High Sparrow. And with the with Ghost charging into the side of the poor fellows, he further pins them into position, which means I can't effectively get away to uh, to start getting into the conscripts that are sitting on that objective. The Warrior Sons can do it just fine, but I was really hoping that the... Uh, Warrior Sons would be able to go into the Rangers instead of having to commit to the Conscripts because it's really not the unit they want to be going into. Not that Rangers are any much more survivable or anything like that, maybe by a small margin, but uh, I, I just was more so hoping to go for the the Rangers than the Conscripts. I was hoping that the, the poor fellows would be able to do more work. But instead, they're stuck on the on on Ghost. But the thing about the thing that blows about what Ghost ended up just doing was that um. He gave the poor fellows a faith token, which is going to allow them to do auto wounds to him. So if I don't roll a 1 on the D3, Ghost is just dead, and that's a, a pretty good deal for me. I believe, though, that when we were playing this, we didn't have full confirmation on whether the dogs were worth a victory point or not. So I just kind of played it as though they weren't. But the Warrior Sons end up making it into the Conscripts. And I can't shift over because of my base, uh, and I can't go to 100%. So Ty this is one of those positions where Tyler would end up shifting into me instead. Um, and they end up hitting with everything, but I don't have any uh, High Sparrow cards. I had, uh, I believe I had Mercy of the Mother in my hand, and the real decision that I had to make was, do I end up activating them and do the do Mercy of the Mother in order to get a Faith token on them? But then I realized I was charging into conscripts, and I really didn't care. So it was more so just trying to make sure that the conscripts, or to make sure that the warrior son survived the uh, 
the charge from the rangers but I, I don't have too many issues over here now because that that one charge with the warrior's sons uh did a ton of damage and it was mostly because um the panic check for the conscripts was so terrible they rolled double ones on that one and i don't think they made many if any of the saves that they had to take so they just got evaporated down to one dude uh, I think I contemplated changing direction on my poor fellows, but I think I'm, I think I'm, uh, I, I might have got a little bit ahead of myself and uh, realized that it was Tyler's activation yet. So the bolt thrower, I think, um, I don't know what happened. Oh, the bolt thrower, I, I believe the bolt thrower shot and missed everything or it was the crossbows that shot and didn't or did that fought and didn't make a single hit so this is where i say that um i'm just going to fight you now i think if, <laughs> if i saw that right i believe i rolled a two and i thought that i was rolling one of the white d3s like i really just need to pick those up constantly instead of having to use my dice so i might have pulled the fast one on tyler here on accident and uh and done two wounds to him instead of one uh, unless he had another wound on him for some reason or another, um, but that was uh, that was my bad right there. But I don't I don't know if it would have gone much differently. Who knows? Oh no, it's D three plus one, so never mind. If I just expend it, he dies. So I didn't pull a fast one on Tyler. It was just what I I just killed it. So um, they end up uh, surging forth to kind of just get directly across from the conscripts. Um, there's they'll be the they'll be the ones to charge them next and try and wipe out the last guy and uh try and get that token back from them again i just completely forgot about failing a panic test drops the uh objective so they would have taken control of it now so i'm kind of shooting myself in the foot in terms of this determining determining the tempo plan because i would have shifted it into my favor uh, if I would have remembered that rule, but uh, this is why I think it's good to with whenever a new scenario packet comes out, which they've come out a couple times now, um, you just need to be cognizant of it and read the whole thing before you play it and read it out loud to your opponent so they understand it too. It's kind of like a um, just kind of like a double safe deal where you both know exactly what's required out of you from that scenario, so you don't have to worry about these awkward issues that come up during the middle of the game. I mean, for us it didn't matter because we were none the wiser, right? But now I'm seeing it and realizing that the tempo could have shifted a lot more in my favor. Well, it does look like I have the victory point for killing Ghost. So maybe we did play with the, the, the dog being worth victory points at this point. So I think this game's about a week old, so you'll have to bear with me for um, not remembering the uh, complete um, script of what happened here. But you can, when you look at the table right now, you can see that there's a lot of models missing from Tyler's base as he's getting really worn down in terms of the uh, attrition from the High Sparrow. And it's a lot of it has to do with poor panic checks, but those... Uh, poor fellows haven't really gone anywhere just yet. Um, also, again, you'll notice that I didn't do my any of my uh, my little wounds back to me after using my own ability. So currently, I'm not scoring anything. Um, but Tyler picks up two points, and that two points should be mine. But again, read the scenario packet before you play until you completely have it under control, 100%. I, especially in tournament play, I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you and your opponent both understand the full capacity of all the rules you're going to be working with throughout the game. Uh, it, it just can lead to some unfortunate things, like you could lose a game because you might not have had uh, the victory points worked out right, or even worse, when it comes to tiebreakers, uh, you could... Uh, screw yourself out of placing higher than what you normally would because your tiebreakers were not as good as they actually should have been in terms of how you reported them. But I think uh, right now you can kind of see everything that I talked about in the uh, the High Sparrow Tactics video is really playing out here. Um, I'm being very combat forward. I have a little bit of control element with my opponent, 
but for the most part, um, a lot of the business I'm doing here is really, uh, really based on whittling my opponent down in combat. Now, I think Jon Snow is the... Oh, this was a poor fellow's thing, so... Um, I believe Tyler ended up activating the uh, the swords, or he, he took the swords position and then used the crossbowmen to swing into the poor fellows because we had argued, we'd sat there and talked about how like Jon Snow would be fine going into those Knights of Casterly Rock, but he was weakened again, and uh, if he falls over to a, a panic check from uh, Lannister pays his debts, then he just dies regardless, and it doesn't really cost me anything. So he ended up going with the crossbowmen in order to try and whittle down those poor fellows a little bit. Now for... I, I believe that was the Knights of Casterly Rock. They just took their normal activation instead of retreating to just try and get you know, a good shot on Jon Snow, and they end up taking him off. So uh, we looked at I looked at the rules real quick, and there was no real restriction on placing the corpse pile underneath a unit it just couldn't overlay any other terrain so maybe i read that wrong but i'm pretty sure that's how it works out and the uh the scorpion can uh claim that objective just by parking on it so no uh no problems there and now i've got to try and figure out how to get to that scorpion because this is another thing that's going to slow down my tempo i score my one victory point from taking out john snow and uh, the Knights of Casterly Rock are just kind of sitting there engaged with the Ranger Trackers. And I think they don't mind that so much because we're both about the same level of efficacy. And I I don't know what Tyler's um, motivations are in terms of the NCU board right now. Uh, if he retreats out with the uh, Rangers, it could mean good stuff for him. But uh, the NCU board itself looks like it's... Uh, it, it's kind of taking a sidebar right now because there's just so much happening on the table. Um, and I have set the pace of the, of the game quite a bit and, uh, Tyler kind of has to respond that way. So the, the poor fellows, you can see kind of why I was saying that it didn't really matter so much because the poor fellows that were doing the most work, uh, didn't get to last very long at, up to the, uh, the scorpion bolt thrower. I think it ended up hitting with all of its shots, so they had to take nine or six saves. So it didn't hit with all. It they took six saves and only passed one, and uh, they 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 didn't quite make it through. Or maybe they. I don't know. Maybe I rolled. This is the one where I rolled double ones or something like that on their morale save. But uh, they. Needless to say, they just didn't make it. So the Warrior Sons, I believe, swung into, well, I thought they did, but maybe they didn't. Oh, yeah, they swung into the Conscript and only hit with two of them, and then the Conscript ended up playing Shield that guards the Realms of Men, so he just blocked both of the hits that they got on them. So that was unfortunate for me, and I probably should have uh, waited on that a little bit and tried to suck out some activations through the NCU board. Or maybe I just was, yeah, I must have, I must have actually done that and killed the, uh, um, killed the conscript unit. And maybe the card was the North Remembers or something, or not North Remembers, wrong faction, Brian. Um, and now his watch has ended. But the, uh, the Warrior Sons are not going to be the ones claiming that corpse pile. They're just going to kind of be moving in to put support in on the, uh, the ranger trackers and just uh or they're going to support the knights of casterly rock by going into the ranger trackers and then hopefully setting up next turn so that the knights can kind of take off and start dealing with uh things like the uh bolt thrower and the rest of those crossbows because the crossbows have healed up quite a bit oh it must have been take the black maybe that was something that no that wasn't it either something happened tyler healed some wounds and I don't know. That's kind of one of the bummers. Like, sometimes our schedules just don't line up very well, so I have to comment on these things on my own. And uh, I, I'm not always super cognizant of what was happening on my opponent's side because I focus on my game so much. So I still hope these things are 
uh, useful for people to kind of see how they play out from my perspective. But when it comes to trying to work out what my opponent's doing, uh, it can sometimes be a little bit of a exercise in futility for me. Just because I'm... And Night's Watch is the worst, too, because of the two factions I play the least. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I can say that anymore. I think Lannister and Neutrals are probably the ones I play the least. Um, but Lannister and Night's Watch are probably tied, so... I think I'm playing Night Lannisters a little bit more these days. But every time I play Neutrals, the deck just confounds me, and then I end up making some horrible mistakes and blaming it on the deck. But I think now the uh, the crossbows are shooting into my Ca Knights of Casterly Rock, or it's the, the conscripts fighting into something. Yeah, it was the conscripts fighting into the the poor the poor fellows so they um they don't pass a single save and I'm the reason why I hesitated there was because I didn't I didn't recognize if I got a uh, uh a faith token on them or not but here comes my big one two punch this is uh um f uh protection of the father oh, it looks like I did get a faith token but protect or uh, wrath of the warrior goes down on them and the um hold the line order goes off so now they are uh they're they're swinging on into um that conscript unit with way more dice and way more attacks than what they need to or way more buffs than what they need to kill them but when you kind of see stuff like this happen you might as well take it right so they hit with five and uh they use the faith token to do an extra two wounds back to them and those conscripts i don't think they've got much of a chance for surviving right now um, so yeah, I think Tyler had failed all of his saves, and then I did hear me roar at before I, this was, I didn't do this cheat, cheaty, but, um, I think he would have failed and failed his panic and died anyways, but what I ended up doing was I always like look up in the air and say, don't show me what you rolled because I'm going to do hear me roar. And then I didn't, I ended up not needing it, but I, like I say, I try to be as clean as possible. So I committed to that card and. Uh, killed the conscript unit, took that objective back, so not only am I sitting at four points now, but I've also got that uh, objective uh, held down pretty well, and as long as I can keep away from that scorpion bolt thrower, the poor fellow should be able to last the rest of the game on that objective, because Tyler doesn't have a lot of forward threat to put out to them that's not at risk from getting hit by something else. So, like, the, uh, the, the bolt throwers, or the crossbowmen, they could come up and try and start shooting on them but they're kind of trying to deal with this knights of casterly rock elephant in his deployment zone well not his deployment zone maybe they're sticking their toe in there but they're close to it the uh the knights do take a little bit of of heat and uh i opt to retreat them because the rangers did activate um so i don't have to worry about any uh extra charges coming from them at all and uh, my hope is to just retreat onto this objective so I can bunker down and hold it because now I don't... This is where we talk about the, the tempo of the game. I'm really switching it back in my favor. Like, the attrition's going my way. Uh, I'm not too worried about any of the extra damage that's going to come at me because I do have cards in my hand that'll help mitigate that a little bit. So what I want to do is just try and score points quickly. It's turn... It's the, we're getting towards the bottom of turn three, and by the end of this turn, I could easily pick up three points just from objectives and end up or end this turn on uh, on seven victory points, which is a big deal. Uh, I believe that I did protection of the father on this one. And uh, the knights end up taking one wound, but they pass their morale test pretty well. So they're still sitting here with, uh, I think it's four wounds total on the unit. That's a remaining and uh, Lannister Supremacy is putting out work again and removes a rank from the uh, Builder Crossbowmen, which is good because now they're not shooting seven dice. And I get my crown at the wrong time because I wanted I should have had it earlier with the Warrior Sons. Like, they didn't need to activate early, so Preston Greenfield could have just been able to get me a couple cards. But the, uh, the Crown Zap does pull off a unit, or pull off a model from the... A crossbowman unit so it wasn't a terrible play it just could have been done earlier so that i could get more use out of preston greenfield 
because I don't think, not to spoil, do spoilers, but I don't think there's a single point in this game where I draw a card off of Preston Greenfield, and that's a little sad. So I'm happy right now because I've kind of got the the game in a really interesting spot. Tyler is really low on victory points because I've really put a lot of threat out and taken the middle of the table real hard and kind of set the battle line for him to where he can't get in there quite effectively. Um, I think this was another Lannister, or no, this was a paid mutiny. I was kind of hoping that Tyler would would have failed horribly on that one and maybe killed the the bolt the uh, crossbowman unit, but it, it, it took a couple guys. Or maybe, no. No, it wasn't a card. It was the crown. I'm just being silly. So that was probably a bit of a... I don't think it was a bad play. I was just trying to get them out of the way or get them off the table so I didn't have to deal with them right away. And uh, the bolt thrower ends up shooting in and uh, I do Wealth of the Rock to get them up to fours, but I do have a vulnerable on me and that causes an, uh, me to lose a horse I think it was three wounds total. But that one knight's still s sticking it in there. And uh, and that's good for me because now it's... Since I'm able to heal him, it's going to be a lot harder for Tyler to kind of rubber band back from this. Because right now, uh, the bolt thrower's kind of done its thing. Uh, there's only two more shooting units left. I think he needs to remove the... Uh, he needs to remove the knights and then try to stop me from killing a unit because if I do, that takes me up to 10 and that would end up pulling the game out. So in reality, with the the conscripts having dropped coins, though, um, I should be sitting at 9 right now instead of 7, so it would even be a worse deal for the game. So I know that uh, we, we missed a little bit of business here, but the Knights of Casterly Rock ended up uh, failing, uh, they they ended up getting shot down and their their saves just weren't good and the battery died so we missed the unit dying but they they did die they dropped the token on the corpse pile and it's not Tyler's not really quite able to get close enough to it to get into the objective so uh, given where we're at right now I think that. Um, I think that this one, now this one's the paid mutiny that comes down on the crossbowman unit. And they fail it, so I go up to eight. And I think at this point we were discussing the trajectory of the game, and there's no way for Tyler to stop my uh, poor fellows from scoring objectives, or the objective points, so the game just ends right there. It was a, a well-fought game, and uh, the High Sparrow is extremely potent and powerful, and I think the Poor Fellows bring a really unique element to the Lannister list, and people should probably look at respecting them a little bit more than what they do.